I'm Mike Hanewald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and as the calendar changes to April, it's time to start thinking about um, potentially getting out in the field. And I know it looks like we might have a little bit of a wet start to the month of April across most of Ohio, but when that window opens up, we want to be ready. And so I just wanted to share some thoughts about early planting and early spraying um, and some things to think about if you get that opportunity. So first of all, with early planting, um, we've seen consistently in our PFR data uh, at Bex that planting in the month of April is when you can maximize your potential, especially with soybeans. And I, I believe that planting soybeans early is, is one of the top things you can do to improve yields on your farm. And as you look at that data on your screen, you can see that within the month of April, we're within 1% of the maximum potential yield that we've achieved in our planting day studies. Um, but remember that in the month of April, it doesn't really matter whether you plant April 5th or April 25th, our data shows that you're going to be able to maximize uh, your yield potential. Um, once you get the first of May, there's a slow de decrease in yield potential, but really even the first half of May, we don't see a big drop until we get to the middle of May is when we start to see that yield potential to decrease rapidly. Now, I know sometimes Mother Nature doesn't give us an opportunity to get out in the field um, in the, this early time frame, but when we get those early windows, we want to take advantage of it. Um, but the key thing is to plant into good conditions. It's early April, we've got time, and so we wanna make sure that we're planting when the field is fit. Um, we don't have uh, sidewall compaction or, or too much compaction from our, our equipment going across the field to really set that crop up for the best potential of the rest of the year. Corn is kind of a similar story. That April timeframe is, is gonna be the, the maximum potential for corn. You can see that on your screen there. Um, but corn, it's, it's especially important for those planting conditions. We need that picket fence stand, and those plants coming up all about the same time. That's what produces our best results for corn. And we don't see the big drop off in yield potential in corn uh, as extreme as beans. If the right time to plant corn and get it all, all up out of the ground at the same time comes in late May, we can still grow a really good corn crop. And so uh, corn, the conditions are extremely important, but even soybeans, we don't want to push the limits too far because we want to set that crop up uh, for success. Um, our planting depth is going to be the same whether you're planting early or planting late. Two inches for corn, inch and a half for beans. Those have been our PFR proven uh, depths. Also, if you're going to be planting in early April, make sure that you have a conversation with your crop insurance agent because those um, different policies um, allow that early planting and, and have different implications on crop insurance. So just have that conversation as well. Next, switching gears to early spring. Um, that's a question that I, I've been getting this time of year is, is do we go out when it comes to terminating cover crops or early burn down um, and then laying down residuals? How do we look at that when it's this early? So first thing is when you're killing or growing weed, it's really important that that plant is actively growing in order to get a good kill. And so ideally, the general rule of thumb is you take the high temperature for the day and the low temperature for the day, you add them together, and if you're over 100, you should be good to go. Um, to, to get to spray and, and be able to count on a good kill. Now, if all you're going out is maybe a zero rye cover crop and that rye is really little, um, rye is pretty easy to kill, so you might be able to push the limits a little bit there, but if you're trying to kill any kind of troublesome weeds and you're counting on getting your field totally clean from that application, ideally we wanna wait for a little bit of warmth um, for that to be reliable. I get the question sometimes, well, why does it work in the fall but not in the spring? The thing to remember is fall spraying, that plant is growing downwards. It's taking everything in and moving it down to the roots to be able to survive the winter time. Um, where, and so that, that chemical gets it through the, out that entire plant very efficiently. In the spring, our plants are growing upwards. And so they're growing um, above ground growth to try and maximize leaf area. And so um, it's not as efficient at getting that chemical throughout the entire plant to get a good kill. So we need those warm temperatures to help us out. The next question that it comes to um, for early spraying is, what about the residuals? If we put them on in early April, are they gonna last? You know, a label will tell you that you get three to four weeks out of residual control. If it's cooler out, like it usually is when we're spraying earlier, that usually can extend, sometimes four or five or even, even six weeks that we might get out of that residual. So the way to approach a residual application is if you know that you'll be planting the field within a few days of spraying or you're spraying at the same time as you're planting, I have no problem putting out a residual herbicide early because if it's cool, that, that residual is gonna extend a little bit longer, but the crop will be growing with it. And even though the beans are a little slower out of the ground or corn is a little slower out of the ground, it will, um, it, that crop is progressing. So then by the time that residual wears off, the crop should be far enough along that if we're gonna make a post application, um, that we are timing it right, that yeah, that post will be a little bit earlier than normal, but our crop development is earlier than normal as well. 
I, what I wouldn't do is get too excited about going out and spraying a whole bunch of acres without immediate plans of planting when you're looking at this, this first half of April. Um, because then if that field lays bare for three, three or four weeks before you get a chance to get out there and plant, you've just lost that, that chemical control that is going to be that much um, sooner that that chemical is going to wear off and you're going to need to come through and make that post application earlier relative to crop development than what you would like to see. So uh, just some things to think about there. So um, as you uh, make these decisions, if you have any questions about these or any other agronomic topics, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative and we'd be happy to help. Stay safe out there.